If you're producing any form of electronic music, you'll know what a lead synth is, but many new producers use generic sounds or they design sounds that don't stand out. So let's fix that with these six hacks that I use all the time to make my lead synths pop. And the chances are that while you're here, you probably want some lead sounds that are good quality, unique and distinctive, and are just ready to go as soon as you load them up. That's why I put together my next level leads pack, which has over 20 ready to go serum presets that you can use royalty free in your productions today. Check that out in the description, but let's get into today's video. So hack one here is to think like a guitarist. Now an electric guitar on its own, not necessarily an acoustic guitar, with no pedals or amplifier, sounds pretty lifeless and thin on its own. But with the right signal chain, it can come alive and sound anthemic and huge. But a lot of producers don't really take this into account when designing lead sound. Lead guitars have effects. So why should we not put those same effects that we would put on a guitar on a lead synth? So I've got this lead synth here, which is just a simple saw way with some filtering, a bass line and a kick underneath. It's kind of a techno-y trance example. <laughs> Bit of side chain there just to give it some ducking with the kick. But apart from that, there's no processing on this analog lead synth here. The melody and the bass line work well together, but it's not quite there. Now I've created this set of effects here, which I've named pedal board to show you that post processing is everything in lead. Let's switch this on and see how the sound is completely transforms. <laughs> Incredible, right? Let's dive in and see what was actually going on here. Now, I've used quite a lot of effects in this example just to give you an idea of what types of effects you can use, but by all means, don't feel like you need to go this overboard. Ableton has a lot of cool effects, which as I did in my last week's video, you'll see there's so many options to use. So I've used mostly stock Ableton here. I've used the pedal device on the distort mode. This is obviously modeled off a guitar pedal and it just adds a bit of grit. I've turned everything off so you can hear the effects of this. Just adds a bit of drive. I'm just gonna change the input volume on the synth here just to give it a bit of headroom as I add these effects. Some chorus ensemble is a great way to add that thick kind of 80s sound to a guitar and it can be used to do the same to a lead synth. The amount here I'm adding is pretty subtle. Some more overdrive, kind of like a pedal, again, just to add more distortion, but a different kind. It's amp to mimic an amp from a guitar. On this rock setting, it get this, gets this nice grit that I've dry wetted, so you can kind of hear the original unprocessed version too. Gets that real bitiness out of the sound. Some channel EQ to cut the lows and tame the highs. The shifter device is a cool device that allows you to get an octave effect. And I've done this with a little bit of wobble, so you get this really nice kind of detuned octave sound. Now you can just layer up the MIDI and octave, but I like to do it this way sometimes. OTT to kind of control it all just a little bit. Reverb and delay, bit of extra EQ, stereo imaging, and a limiter just to control it all. And you can tame all of these controls down to make a less aggressive sound. You can delete some of the distortion units to make it more of a subtle sound. So hack number two here would be to use a chopped vocal sample as your source of lead. Now, you might think to use a saw wave or a sine wave or a square wave in a normal synth or maybe something in serum like a wavetable. But a vocal is a great starting point for a lead synth sound because vocals are instantly recognizable to the ear. If you want a good example of a song with a strong vocal sounding lead, think of a song like Midnight City by M83. Now you don't have to use a vocal sample here. You could use something like a formant filter on uh, serum here and play around with that. But I like this vocal chop I've loaded up here. I've just picked a certain slice of it, kind of past the first initial part of the phrase. <laughs> Made it quite plucky and added a bit of warping. And it's a nice source sound, but what happens when we copy and paste our same effects chain onto this vocal sound? Now this is a bit too much, so I'm gonna bring down our input volume and then see how it sounds. Much better, right? We have a bit more of a controlled, tamer sound. And now we've got a distinct sounding vocal kind of lead, and it sounds different to our main kind of saw based one before. 
that is gonna get the listener's attention. You can play around with the different types of vocal samples and find one that's right for you. Play around with the types of effects and kind of customize your own sound from there. If you, want a great, if you want a great example of how to use vocal samples in your music, by the way, make sure you go check out my old video on vocal samples and the multitude of techniques you can use. Okay, so hack number three is to go nuts with automation and modulation. If we head back to our original uh, saw based one, we've got this auto pan that I added on that I hadn't turned on yet. And there's a reason you can use different types of modulation to kind of add a bit more flair and vibe to your lead synth lines. Using just MIDI with effects and no real motion is nice for certain sounds, but it just doesn't give you the full breadth and depth of expression that you are allowed to do in a modern DAW. So what I'm gonna do here is I've got this auto pan set to 124 and I've got it set to a tremolo effect so there's no left and right differences. If I bring this up over time, you'll hear this really cool rhythmic effect. So I'm gonna go ahead there and automate this on every uh, end of every second bar. Kind of like this uh, more soft shape here. That's one really cool effect we could do. We could also play around with our filter cutoff on the main synth. And when you tweak things on the main synth, it's really cool because all the effects that that synth is going through is gonna react differently to the change in the initial synth. You'll see when I bring the frequency up here. Another effect I can have a bit of fun with here is some vibrato right at the end. I'm just gonna kind of create a bit more of a vibrato tail. Maybe get rid of that other auto pan there. One thing I could also play around with to end this section off is just the release as well to kind of give it some extra tension towards the end and make it a bit shorter at the start. Of course, all of these tips can be applied to the vocal version we created in the last hack, if you so like. Okay, so number four is to stack your layers up on your synths with the right sounds. And right sounds is actually probably the most crucial advice here because I see too many producers just slap on a second layer and think that's gonna make it thicker or wider, when in reality, they're just destroying their mix. For example, the two layers that I've created here, the Super Soul version and the vocal version, because they're being processed by the same set of effects, they sound similar, but the key source material is different, but complementary, right? And that's what we want to look for. Not the same, but complementary sound. Now, if I was to layer these two, I'd probably ease back on the distortion of this vocal version a bit more. I'd ease back on the shifter. Maybe use a different type of distortion just for fun. Of course, I'd move those automation and modulation changes to a group, which I'll get to in a second, instead of having it just on one version so that the leads sound cohesive. But if I wanted to add a third layer, I'd look for something a bit lower in octave as well. And that's a great way to layer as well as look for sounds that aren't in the same octave as the sounds you're already using. For example, this brass layer. I might pitch down the octave. Also bring in a noise layer here, just like a plucky noise layer to give it a bit of attack. And lastly, a great sound to layer up is a piano with a little bit of a tweak and a little bit of processing. And all together. Now, if you want to dive into deliberate professional quality layering, this is something I cover deep inside my Breakthrough Sound Design course, which I'll leave a link in the description if you would like to check that out and enroll. So hack number five is to use a mastering chain 
on your lead synth group. Now, this is an absolute game changer that I actually didn't come up with myself. I actually saw it in an old What's So Not tutorial where he was doing a breakdown of his major laser remix where he chucked Ozone on the main lead bass sound. Now, I'm not going to use Ozone here. I'm going to try and stick to Ableton stock. But if we jump into the utilities, audio effect track, and find a nice mixing and mastering preset, let's see if we can find something here that's going to suit what we need. I'm going to try this punchy dance preset, and I'm going to try it on this bright parallel preset. Now, to tame the effect, I might use a utility just to bring it back before this chain. Mix the different layers a bit more. And then lastly, I'm gonna move our side chain onto the final version rather than having side chain in our individual layer. Now, a real quick bonus hack for number six that I like to use between different sections is actually to swap up the lead sound. Now, in a drop in this style of track, we've got a huge layered lead. This won't work very well in a breakdown. So sometimes it's actually fine as you're exiting a section to swap up the sounds. So let's listen to this lead and transition into something a bit more chill. <laughs> It's like a plucky piano kind of sound that suits a breakdown way better than the original. So this is just a quick thing to mention that you don't have to keep the same sound doing the same melody throughout your whole track. You can switch it up if it makes sense. And it's a great way just to add a different take on something that the listener has already heard many times in the track. And if you really want to, we can actually use similar processing techniques just to make sure that they sound good together. I can use a maybe more stripped back version without as much distortion and shifting effects and OTT, just so there's a similarity between the two versions there. And these six hacks are things that you can use to transform your leads from something average into something incredible. And if you want some great examples of sounds within just Serum that sound like this, then check out the next level lead packs that I mentioned in the description. Over 20 great quality lead presets that you can just drag and drop into music royalty free to make something sound unique and amazing. I hope you liked this video. If so, thumbs up is always appreciated. Subscribe to the EDM Prod channel for more videos from myself and the team. And I will see you in the next one.